Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Come on in on this Lord's Day. Come on in. So happy to be here. So happy to be with the saints this morning and all the other people that are uh, following me this morning on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> welcome, Kingdom Life. Come on. Come on in. Come on in, Kingdom Life. I know you're up. I know you're ready. I know you're excited. So come on in. Come on in, everybody. Yes, today is August 30th. We are almost into September. The year is just moving right along. Hallelujah. And God is still God. Amen. So just come on in. Come on in. I'm so blessed this morning. I'm so happy this morning to just be in the presence of the Lord, to still have praises on my lips and to still be able to lift my hands, glory to God, to lift my voice and to give him glory and praise. It has been a rough past seven days. We're dealing with uh, just, just one thing after another, you know, just life really. And we have to make up our minds that regardless of what it is that we are facing or whatever it is we are being challenged with, that it will not steal our praise. Glory to God. It will not change our perspective about this great and awesome God that we serve. And it does not change his promises that he has made toward us. So come on in because I do have a word from the Lord. I have a word that I believe will uh, help you, a word that I believe will encourage you. Uh, if you're tired, I believe it's going to give you strength. If you are sick, I believe it's going to bring healing to your body. Whatever it is that you need today, we have a God, we serve a God who is more than able, hallelujah, to meet every single need that we have. So just come on in, come on in. I am uh, just ready. I'm ready to bless the Lord. I'm ready to help you. Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to go right into uh, just a little bit of worship. Not me singing, because you guys know I don't sing, but uh, we can lift up our voices to the Lord. Hallelujah. I have a song in my heart, but I just, I can't let it out of my mouth. It, it, it just a mess up everything. But come on and just lift your hands to the Lord with me. Father, oh my God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, God. We worship you on this morning. We call you great. We call you awesome. We call you holy. We call you faithful, hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God who supplies every single one of our needs. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're the God who heals all of our diseases, hallelujah. You're Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace. You're El Shaddai. You're every single thing that we need you to be. You are the great I am, and everything that we need is wrapped up in I am, hallelujah. So we worship you, hallelujah. We worship you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We appreciate you. We thank you for one more day. We thank you that we're in our right minds. We thank you this morning, oh God, that we have the activities of our limbs. We bless you, glory, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your help, hallelujah. You are our our present help in the time of need. And so, God, we thank you for that. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you have gathered us together, even in this way. We thank you for technology. We thank you, Lord, for the availability to be able, God, to share this gospel, to share your word throughout the whole earth. Lord, we just give you the glory. Now, we invite your presence. Hallelujah. We invite you in the room with us. We invite you over this platform, and we ask God that you would just 
uh, open the our eyes today as we go forth in the word of the Lord. We pray, God, that scales will fall from our eyes this morning. We pray that you would open our ears, touch our ears right now, God, that we will hear from the Spirit of the Lord. We pray right now, Father, that you would touch our hearts, that you would break up the fallow ground of our hearts. And when the word of the Lord comes, that it will find a good fertile place in our hearts to take root and to bring forth good fruit in the in the days ahead. Lord, we just open up our hearts to you right now. And we say, speak, Holy Spirit of the living God. We say, speak the mind of God this morning. We say, speak the heart of God this morning. We say, oh God, let the word do what the word does. Let it come alive in us, oh God. Let it begin to move in us, Father. Let it begin to heal us, to help us, to deliver us, to enlighten us, to strengthen us, to wash us, to cleanse us. Oh God, let your word, hallelujah, be powerful in us this this morning in the name of Jesus. We love you so much. We appreciate you so much. We come before you this morning, God, and we ask you, Lord, that you just cleanse our hearts today. Hallelujah. Forgive us of any wrong thought, any wrong motive, anything that is in the way that will block the move of the word today, God. We ask you to move it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We come looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, Father, Father, we are ready to receive from you. And we thank you right now for what you are doing. We thank you right now. Hallelujah for helping us. We thank you right now for being present with us. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on and just bless the Lord with a hand clap. Hallelujah. Because I can tell you right now that the Lord is here with us, that the Lord is present with us, and the Lord is eager. He's eager to help us. He's eager right now to come down and to touch you wherever you need the help of the Lord. I don't know about some of you this morning, but can I tell you that I am so ready to receive from the Lord because the enemy, come on, the enemy was present in my world on last week. Glory, hallelujah. But he is a defeated foe and everything that he tried to do, he was not successful because the Lord was with me. Glory, hallelujah. He was not successful. If the enemy had been successful, I would not be speaking to you this morning because the enemy did some things that brought discouragement to me on last week. He did some things that brought uh, heartache to me on last week. And I had a choice. I could have given up. I could have sat on my little pity pot and I could have cried every day and I could have said, you know what? I'm just discouraged and I'm disappointed and I just don't want to say nothing for the Lord no more. But I made a decision. Devil, you will not win. You will not silence me. You will not take my faith. You will not cause me to give up. I will continue and I will press on. So this morning, hallelujah, I've got a word for you. Yes, I had to fight for this word. Come on. I had to make up my mind, Lord, whatever you tell me to say, I'm going to say it. So this morning, we're going to go into the word of the Lord. We're going to go into Isaiah and we're coming, we're going to read to you from the Living Bible, but we're coming from Isaiah chapter 40 and we're going to read verses 28 through 31. And it says, verse 28 says, don't you yet understand? Don't you know by now that the everlasting God, the creator of the farthest parts of the earth, never grows faint or weary? We do, but he doesn't. He never grows faint or weary. No one can fathom. Come on. No one can fathom the depths of his understanding. Verse 29 says he gives power to the tired and worn out. Come on. And strength to the weak. Even the youth shall be exhausted and the young man will give up. This is the word of the Lord. But they that wait on the Lord. 
<laughs> they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, that's the word of the Lord. Glory to God. I want to use for a subject this morning, running on empty. Come on, running on empty. Glory, hallelujah. This morning, I want to encourage the saints because uh, the saints need to be encouraged because we are still trying to figure out how to live in this new America. Come on. Uh, we're still trying to figure out, you know, how to adjust to what's going on in America. And and we got a couple of options. Uh, we could uh, just kind of sit idly by uh, waiting on things to go back to normal. We, You know, that's an option that you have. It's not the right option or a good option, but that's what some people are doing. Or we can accept the fact that this is our normal now this is the new normal and and we got we just need to learn how to uh maximize our living in it and and i can tell you this that um ever since this pandemic or whatever this thing is has started that it doesn't matter which option you choose you can sit back and and believe that things are just going to eventually go back to normal or you can uh believe that this is our new normal and we got to learn how to do it it doesn't matter which option you choose but either one has the potential to just sap the strength right out of you at one point or another it just has the potential to do that and when that happens then you got to figure out what it is that you're going to do and so some who are waiting on things to go back to normal, what they're going to do is nothing. They're just going to sit back and they're going to uh, just do nothing and wait in vain. And really, they're going to die in that place where they're waiting. But the rest of us, come on, the rest of us, we will have to, when our strength feel like it's being sapped, we're going to have to look to the hills from which cometh our help. As the Bible tells us in Psalms 121, thank God we've got the best option that we can look to the hills from which cometh our help because all of our help comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. And so I am so happy this morning for that option. And I pray that you are too. I know that so many of you are growing weary and tired because of this way that we're thrown into this new way of living. It is so challenging for everybody. It's challenging now because uh, I'm watching the young people that can't go back to school and they're uh, not with their friends and they're doing all this uh, thing electronically and, and and all of that. And so that's a challenge. It's a challenge for the parents. It's a challenge for people that are just shut up in their homes together and they can't really get away from each other like they used to, even for a break. It's not, it's not even a negative thing. It's not saying, my God, I can't stand you. It's saying, you know what? Everybody needs their time alone sometimes. And so all of this has just become very challenging. And some days it's just like it's it's too much to learn and, and it's too much to unlearn and it's too much to remember and it's just too much change at one time. It just happens so fast. Let me tell you, I can't even uh, begin to tell you how many times that I have to remember when I leave the house that I got to remember to grab that mask. I got to remember to put that mask on. I got to remember what the laws are today. You know, yesterday it was one law and then today it's another law. And now, you know, you got to remember all that. Or, or I have to remember not to do what used to be so normal for me, like just reaching out, giving somebody a hug. I got to remember, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I, I can't touch that. Oh, I can't, you know, just trying to remember. It's just so much. And, it and after a while, it doesn't matter if you're saved or not saved. It doesn't matter if you're spirit-filled or not spirit-filled. After a while, it just becomes so draining. And, 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 and I found for myself that one of the things that is most draining to me is that I'm expected to walk around every day with the thought that I am possibly a contaminated individual whose very breath could contaminate somebody else, even my own flesh and blood. 
Can you imagine having to think that every single day? But that's the world that we're living in now, and that's the message that's being pushed on us every single day is that you're the one. You could possibly be the one that's contaminated. You could possibly be the individual who could breathe on somebody or talk to somebody and, and contaminate them. And so that in itself is just very, very draining. And if we are not careful, this kind of mindset, this very kind of mindset will create fear, it will create frustration, and it will create fatigue. And it will have you running on empty. And so when when these things happen, you think about it and you say, Well, 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 how how is this happening? Why is this so bad? It's because we are not created to even think this way. We're we're being asked to remember something that is 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 bad. This is not something to remember that's good or something that's natural for us to do. It's just the opposite of that. And because it's the opposite of that, it takes more energy because it's just not natural. I'm forcing myself to remember to do things that are essentially just unnatural for me. This is this is just not natural. It's not natural for me to not be able to pick up my grandbaby, my new grandbaby, and give my grandbaby hugs and kisses. It's just it's just not natural. It's not natural for me you know, not to be able to hug the saints. It's just not natural. And so I got to remember to do these things that, that they're asking me to remember things that are going against what the word of the Lord says for me. The word of the Lord says he's not giving us the spirit of fear and yet the spirit of fear is being pushed through the earth. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So this is what I'm grabbing hold to. This is what I need to remember. Not the other things. I need to remember this. I need to remember that regardless of what's going on in the world, I don't need to be afraid of that. Uh, uh, the Bible, I don't need to be anxious about it. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I am walking around and I am seeing so many anxious people right now. Even the saints are just very anxious right now. And it's hard not to be anxious when it's being pushed on you everywhere that you go. The images that they show us, even with the people that uh, might get the virus, they're not showing the multitudes of people that survive it and live and overcome it. They just keep shoving in your face the ones that have died. And so you can't help but be anxious because the enemy is saying to you, that's going to happen to you too. And so, and so we, we're fearful and, and, we're, and we're anxious and then we're fatigued. We're just tired. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. But this message Message that is being sent toward us tells us that no matter what you do, you're going to end up getting it. And so now, even in doing good, we're, we're fatigued, we're tired and all of that. And so we're, we're, we're just running on empty right now. There are so many saints that are just running on empty right now. I began to feel myself in the same way because there's so many changes that are happening. I don't know if any of you can relate to this or not, but have you ever ever been in a car that is trying to get to the gas station before it stops on the side of the road. Here you are in the car and the gas is almost out. Have you ever been in a car where the gas needle is on the other side of E and you are praying to get to your destination? You, you hoping that you can get there. Now I, I rarely, if ever, let my uh, uh, gas tank get that low, but I've been in the car with people that their gas tank is that low, and I'm praying along with them, Lord, please help us make it to the gas station. Have you ever run out of gas? And someone else had to come along and they had to give you a push or they had to pull you to where you were trying to go. Or maybe they just had to bring you some gas so that you could continue on your journey. Well, Holy Spirit began to speak to me and Holy Spirit said, that's where a lot of God's people are right now. In the middle of this pandemic, this is where a lot of people are in the body of Christ right now. They are just running on empty and they're hoping 
hoping that they can just make this journey. They're hoping that they can continue with the Lord. They're hoping that they got the strength and the faith and everything that they need in order to just continue on in the things that they used to believe before the pandemic hit, in the things that they used to have faith for before the pandemic hit. And now this pandemic came and it has pretty much sucked all the faith out of us and all the hope out of us. And oh my God, we're just struggling trying to make it. But here is the good news. This is what I came to tell you this morning. Holy Spirit said to let you know you will make it. It doesn't matter how you feel right now. You will make it. How do I know that we're going to make it? Because the word of the Lord says this. Don't you yet understand? Do you not get it? Don't you know by now? Don't you know by now that the everlasting God, the creator of the farthest parts of the earth, never grows faint or weary, never runs out of gas. No one can fathom the depths of his understanding. This great big God that we serve never runs on empty. And he wants you to know that he is right there for you. He is right there. And the Lord said to let you know that he is ready to fill us up again. He's ready to fill us up again and again and again. He says, if I need to pull you, I'll pull you. If I need to push you, I'll push you. If I need to carry you, I will carry you. But I never run on empty. I never get tired. I never get weary. And so because of that, if you lift your eyes up to me, if you cry out to me, I will help you. I have have every single thing that you need. Hallelujah. The Lord, the word of the Lord says, no one can fathom the depths of his understanding. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I read that and I began to think about how many times when I would get tired of myself having to go to God again, come on, asking for help, for something I think I should have been able to handle myself, except I ran out of gas. Come on, I'm going to say that one more time. I don't know about you, but there have been times and there are times. And actually, last week was one of those times for me when I get tired of myself. I get tired of myself having to go to God again asking for help for something that I think I should have been able to handle myself, except I ran out of gas. How did I run out of gas? I ran out of gas because I was not on top of my spiritual business. One of the things that has happened in this pandemic for the saints is that uh, we've been, we have been thrown into an environment because we've been shut in, because we've been quarantined and all of that, because we have been thrown into an environment of unstructured, an unstructured environment, which means our uh, regular habits have been broken. And now we're thrown into this unstructured thing. And a lot of us are undisciplined in our Bible study. We're undisciplined in our fasting. We're undisciplined discipline in our prayer life. And because we have all these other distractions around us and all these other things, we have a tendency sometimes to not pay attention to the things that we should be paying attention to. And so you let your gas tank, come on, you let your gas tank be begin to go down. Your spiritual gas tank begin begins to go down, but you're not really paying attention to it. You know, sometimes we can be in the car and we can be traveling and we know when we got in the car we really didn't have that much gas and it was our intention even to pull off and go to the gas station and, and get some gas so that we would make it to where we're going and sometimes we get distracted and we forget and we find ourselves on the road and now we're running out of gas or we forgot how far the journey was going to be and so sometimes we let the enemy in somewhere and we get distracted and we forget 
get to fill up for the journey ahead. We're not, we're not planning to stop on the journey. We're not planning to not complete the assignment. See, that's what happens when you run out of gas. You can't get to the assignment that God has given you. And so, and so sometimes when this happens, come on, it has happened to me. Come on, and I know that it has happened to you that 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 now I got to go back to God. I got to go crawl into God and I got to say to the Lord, fill me up. Fill me up again, Lord. Help me again, Lord, because I didn't get filled up that morning when you told me to get up early for prayer because that was my moment to get filled up in the spirit. I didn't turn off that TV show and go spend some time in the word. And so it took some of the gas out of me and I had a moment to fill up, but I ignored that moment. I was distracted. I was caught up doing this or caught up doing that. I could have even just been taking a nap and you woke me up. But whatever it is, I found myself in a state of running on empty. And now that could have been avoided had I come to the Lord when the Lord was beckoning beckoning for me to come. And so, but he is still a good God. He is still a good God. The scripture says no one can fathom the depths of his understanding. Here's what I love about this everlasting loving father that we serve. He understands, come on, he understands my human frailty and he helps me in spite of it. Come on, that's the good word today, that he understands that we are weak. He understands that we are frail. He understands that we don't always get it right. He understands that we get distracted sometimes. He understands, hallelujah, and yet, come on, he said, but you can still come because I never get weary. I never get tired of you, even though you mess up along the way. The scripture goes on to say in verse 29, it says he gives power to the tired and worn out and strength to the weak. My God, my God, my God. This is something that I notice about my journey with the Lord. I notice in my journey with the Lord, I notice that when my gas tank is filled, (laughs) I notice that when my gas tank is filled, that when disappointments come my way, when things happen that I didn't expect or things that that, that come to uh, uh, disrupt my life, I notice that when my gas tank is filled, I handle it differently. I, I I can still praise. I can still uh, uh, say to God, be the glory. But when my gas tank is empty, come on, when my gas tank is low and when I don't have much strength, then when those hard times come, when those disappointment come, it has a tendency to wear me out. It has a tendency to make me cry. It has a tendency to make me give up. It has a tendency to make me doubt the Lord. And that's why the Lord wants us to keep our tanks filled. But he says he gives power. Ha, my God, to the tired and the worn out, and he gives strength to the weak. He lets us know that regardless to where you are, I'm here for you, and I will help you, and you won't fail, and you won't faint along the way. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you that it is all right if you are running on empty right now? Come on. Can I tell you that? Can I tell you it's all right that you don't have to beat yourself up, that you don't have to let the devil make you feel like that you are worthless, that you are the weakest leak in the chain. Come on. It's okay because the Lord is right here this morning. He's right here this morning to strengthen you and he will help you to rise up in power. Glory. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says this in verse 30. It says even the youth shall be exhausted, will be exhausted and the young men will all give up. Oh, it's not just the mature ones who are struggling and suffering during this pandemic. It's not just the seniors that are suffering. No, the even the youth. This thing that is happening in the world right now is wearing everybody down. Even the youth are struggling and even the youth are suffering. The spirit of death, come on. The spirit of death in all of its form is running rampant. And many have felt as if they they just cannot go on. They don't have a reason to go on. A lot of young people, a lot of young people are taking their lives. They have run out of reasons to live because what they thought would be one way is now not that way. 
and 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 many of them feel like their future have just been stolen from them. But the Bible says that that in verse thirty one says, "But if they wait upon the Lord, He shall renew their strength. He shall renew their strength." The Amplified says it's like this: "But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, those who expect." look for and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. In other words, those who continue with the Lord. Can I tell you today that if you are running on empty, this is no time to quit. This is no time to give up on the Lord. This is no time to throw up your hands and, and give up and die. Go in another direction. Run after the things of the world. No, this is not the time. This is the time to continue with the Lord, the everlasting Father, the creator of the universe. He is the one who is in charge. He may, the things that the Lord is doing, we don't always see everything while he's doing it, but if you would just hold on, if you would just keep trusting in the Lord, he's working it all out for your good. The word of the Lord says they shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run. The Bible says that they shall run and not be weary. You shall run, but you won't run on empty. Come on. You shall run, but you won't run out of gas. You shall run, but you won't run out of faith. The Bible says they they shall walk and they will not faint. You'll be able to walk through the fire. You'll be able to walk through the flood. You'll be able to go through every type of situation and circumstance, but you will not faint. Some of the things won't be what you thought it would be, but you won't faint. You will still be strong. You will still be standing. You will still be going through. How do I know this? Because this is the promise from the creator of the universe. This is the promise from the creator of you and me. And it does doesn't matter how tired or how weary you may be today. You may be running on empty and you may feel like, come on, I'm talking about emotion. You may feel like you will not make it, but God says otherwise. Let me tell you something. You have to understand that the devil is a liar. You have to understand that he will talk to you through your emotions and he will talk you right out of your blessing. He will talk you right out of your faith. He will talk to you in such a way that you will lose all hope, but you have to hold on to what the Lord has said. Our God says otherwise. Even now, I believe this. I believe that if you can just grab hold to the word of the Lord that has been preached today, I believe if you could just muster up just a, a mustard seed size, size of faith, I believe that you will begin to feel the refreshing, the refreshing of the Lord right now. The Lord has come this morning to refresh us. He has come this morning to encourage us. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows the burden that you have been carrying. He knows the disappointment that has just come and hit you so hard that it knocked the wind out of you. But oh my God, he's saying, if you would just continue with me, if you would just trust me, if you would just come before me this morning, come on, I will feel you your tank. My God, my God, my God. He said, this is what the Lord said to me. The Lord said, let the people know this. Let the people know that if they would just come to me, that I will fill their tank with my grace so they can go on. Come on. I will fill their tank with my grace so that they can go on. How many of you know if it had not been for the grace of the Lord, we would not even be here today. If it had not been for the grace of the Lord. We would not be able to hear the word of the Lord with faith, but it is the grace of the Lord. He said to let you know this morning that he is filling your tank with mercy in the place of your mess up. Come on, that's a good word. He is filling your tank with mercy, with his mercy in the place of your mess up. It doesn't matter how bad you messed up. It does not, can I say that? It does not matter 
deserve. How bad you messed up. God said, if you come before me this morning, I will fill your tank up with my mercy. I've got enough mercy to cover your mess up. I got enough mercy to cover your misery. Come on. This is the Lord speaking this morning. He says, I'm filling your tank with faith in the place of your failure with faith in the place of your failure. God knows that you fail. God knows that I fail. God knows that there have been some times and some situations and some things. Some of us have secret failures because we've done some things in secret and we fail. We've said some things. Come on. But God says, even in spite of all of that, I'm filling your tank with faith where you fail. He says, I'm filling your tank with peace in place of your pressure. See, the enemy wants to just put all this pressure on you. The Bible says he is the accuser of the brethren. And when he comes to accuse us, this is what he will do. You ever did something in faith? Now, I know for myself, because I got many stories like this. You could have done something in faith where you really believed it was the Lord. Or you could have said something in faith and you really believed it was the Lord and then it didn't happen and then it fell. And here come the devil. He going to remind you. He's going he gonna to give you all the reasons why. And you're going to be the reason. You're going to be the center of it. He's going to make you take on ownership of what didn't work out. He is an accuser of the brethren. And when he comes, he's not really coming for you. He's really coming for that faith that's in you. He, he's going to make sure that you don't do nothing else in faith again. He's going to make sure that you don't trust in the Lord again. And so he comes to accuse you. But he is a liar. And he puts all this pressure on you. He just puts all this pressure. He he likes to he likes to do that, but God says, uh-uh, not this time. Let me fill up your tank and I will give you peace. I will give you peace in the place of pressure. Some of you need pressure lifted off of you right now. Pressure lifted off of your mind right now. Pressure lifted off your situation right now. You need peace in the place of the pressure because the pressure, come on. It's killing you. The pressure is coming after your faith. The pressure is coming after your joy. And God says, no, come on, let me fill you up with my peace. And then he says, he's filling your tank with his joy so you can complete the journey. The word of the Lord says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he says, I will fill your tank up with my joy so you can complete the journey. So you won't be found dead on the side of the road. My God, that's a good word. So you won't be found dead on the side of the road. I will fill you up with my joy so you will have strength to get up. So you will have strength to keep going forward. So you will have strength to believe again. So you will have strength to try again. So you will have strength to rejoice again. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. The Lord said this to me when I was preparing this word and I was sitting in the presence of the Lord and I thought that I was done, that I had uh, everything together that the Lord had said for me to share with the people. And he gave me this one prophetic sentence, this one prophetic sentence. He says, before you close out, this is what I want you to tell the people. He said, tell those people that are running on empty, tell them you will soar again. Come on. You will soar again. This is not the end for you. I'm speaking to you prophetically as the Lord has spoken to me. And I'm saying to you, whoever you are, if you've been running on empty, if you've been struggling, if you don't know what's happening and you just want to give up, this is what the Lord is saying to you. The Lord is saying, you will soar again. It's not over. This is not the end for you. You will soar again. Come on, receive that word. Come on, believe that Lord word. Come on and give him thanks for that word. Lift your hands up before the Lord right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Glory, hallelujah. We want to thank you for hearing us. We want to thank you for caring so much about us that you see us where we are 
Hallelujah. You saw us running on empty and you came by. Hallelujah. To fill us up again. To fill us up with your spirit. To fill us up with your grace and your mercy. To fill us up with your peace and your joy. Father, we thank you. We receive from you right now in Jesus' name. We receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive your help. Glory to God. We lay down every burden. We lay down our guilt. We lay down our shame. Hallelujah. We lay down our disappointments right now. Glory to God. And we receive your word. We receive what you have for us. We receive what you have promised us. We believe, hallelujah, that we will so again. That it is not over for us. That this is a new beginning for us. Glory, hallelujah. We will mount up on wings of eagle. Glory to God. We will run, my God, my God, my God. And we will not get weary. We will walk. Hallelujah. We will walk again and we will not faint. We will rise up in power. We will walk in the assignment that you have given us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we thank you. We glorify you. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you next week. Walk in the power of the Lord.